SC5P81. Compare and contrast the basic properties of solids, liquids, and gases, such as mass, volume, color, texture, and temperature. Recognize that solids have a definite shape and volume. Recognize that liquids do not have a definite shape, but have a definite volume. Recognize that gases do not have a definite shape or a definite volume. Recognize that solids have a definite shape and definite volume. Recognize that liquids do not have a definite shape, but have a definite volume. Recognize that gases do not have a definite shape or a definite volume. On the table, I have three glass containers, and each container has a lid on it. In container one, we can observe a clear, colorless, cube-shaped object. In container two, we can observe a clear, colorless liquid. In container three, we have a clear, colorless gas, air. When I turn number one over in my hands, the object inside rolls around, and I can hear the clattering as the object rolls against the glass. The object's size and shape is not changing. Number two, when I turn it over in my hands, doesn't make any sound. The liquid always stays at the bottom of the container as I roll it. Its shape is changing, but its size is not. Number three, I can't really observe anything because it's just air inside the container. I can't really observe what the gas inside the container is doing. Number one is an ice cube. It is a solid and does not change shape when I open the container and pour it out onto the table. Same size, same shape, whether it's in the container or resting on the table. This is a property of all solids. Number two is water. It is a liquid. It does change shape when I open the container and pour it out onto the table. Same amount of water is there. It doesn't change size, but it does change shape. We'll do an investigation later to confirm that the volume of liquids stays the same even when they change shape. Number three is air. Air contains water vapor, a gas, we can measure the amount of water vapor in the air using a hygrometer. That will give us a percentage of humidity. More on that later. Gases do change their shape depending on the container, and when I take the lid off, the gas inside will expand outside the container to fill the room. We'll take a closer look at that in another investigation. So. These are the basic properties of solids, liquids, and gases. Solids do not take the shape of their container. Volume stays the same. Liquids take the shape of their container. Volume stays the same. Gases expand to fill their container. Volume changes as shape changes for gases. Recognize that mass is the amount of matter in an object, is measured with a scale, and is recorded as grams g or kilograms kg. Recognize that mass is the amount of matter in an object, is measured with a scale, and is recorded as grams g or kilograms kg. Mass is the amount of matter in an object or material. Mass can be measured using a digital scale. There are other kinds of scales, such as a pan balance, a beam balance, and a spring scale that also measure mass. For most of our investigations, we will use a digital scale. To use a digital scale, first turn the scale on. It is important to make sure that all scales are first set to zero before using them. Once the scale is set to zero, make sure that the units are set to grams. We record mass in science using grams. To find the mass of a solid, simply place the solid on the scale. 
Allow the scale a moment to register the mass of the object. Then the mass can be read and recorded in grams. To find the mass of a liquid is a little more complicated. First, you need to find the mass of the container when it's empty. We'll use a graduated cylinder for this example. Place the empty graduated cylinder and measure and record the mass as you would for a solid. Next, we will add our liquid to the graduated cylinder. Now, find the total mass of the graduated cylinder and the liquid. The last step is to subtract the mass of the graduated cylinder. The difference is the mass of just the liquid. For fifth grade, we won't be finding the masses of gases. However, it is important to remember that gas does have mass. We can use a process similar to finding the mass of a liquid to find the mass of a gas. First, we find the mass of an empty balloon. We measure and record the mass of the balloon in grams. Next, we blow the balloon up and tie a knot. The balloon is now filled with a gas, air. Now we can find the total mass of the balloon and the air inside. Subtracting the mass of the empty balloon from the total mass of the balloon and air will leave the mass of the air inside. This observation provides evidence for the claim that air, a gas, has mass. Recognize that volume is the amount of space an object takes up, is measured with a graduated cylinder or measuring cup, and is recorded as milliliters, ml, or liters, l. Recognize that volume is the amount of space an object takes up, is measured with a graduated cylinder or measuring cup, and is recorded as milliliters, ml, or liters, capital L. Volume is the amount of space that an object or material takes up. In science, volume is measured in milliliters. 1,000 milliliters are equal to one liter. This soda bottle contains two liters of soda, just to give you a familiar example. To find the volume of a liquid, we can use a measuring cup or a graduated cylinder. Graduated cylinders are more precise than measuring cups. Simply pour the liquid into the cup or cylinder. One important point to make here, do not try to read the volume while looking down. You have to get out of your seat and lower your eyes to the level of the cup or cylinder and read the volume looking straight ahead. You can now measure and record the volume of the liquid inside the measuring container. There are several ways to find the volume of a rectangular prism. You will investigate some ways to find the volume of a rectangular prism in math. Most solid objects that we need to find the volume of, such as a rock, are not going to be a rectangular prism. So let's look at how we can find the volume of irregular objects. First, we need to identify a measuring container that will be large enough to hold the object. This graduated cylinder should fit this rock just fine. Next, we are going to add enough water to the measuring cup to cover the object before we put the object in. We can estimate and round up to the next highest 100 milliliters in this example. We've added 100 milliliters of water to this graduated cylinder. And it looks like that'll be enough to cover the rock when we add it to the water. We record the volume of just the water. Now we add the rock. It sinks to the bottom and the level of water in the measuring cup has risen. There is now 135 milliliters of water in this cylinder. We record that and subtract the 100 milliliters of water that we began with. The difference provides the volume of the rock, 35 milliliters. In fifth grade, we won't focus on the ways to find the volume of a gas. It is enough to recognize that gases do take up space. For example, when I blow up this balloon, we can observe the balloon expanding as the air inside fills up the space. Recognize that solids, liquids, and gases can be described by color. 
Recognize that the texture of an object is observed by touch. Recognize that temperature is the amount of heat in an object, is measured with a thermometer, and is recorded as degrees Celsius. Recognize that solids, liquids, and gases can be described by color. When observing objects and materials, we can use our senses to provide descriptions. Here are three glass containers. Number one contains a solid, number two a liquid, and number three a gas, air. First, let's observe the color of each of the three. All three are colorless, they have no color. Here is an example of a solid which we can describe as red in color. Here is an example of a liquid which can be described as blue in color. The only gas that we're going to observe in fifth grade is air, and air is always colorless. Next, let's observe how each object and material handles light. When I hold up this solid, I can see through it. Light travels through the object, and I can see the objects on the other side. This object is transparent. Here's another solid. Looking through this solid, I observe light coming through the object, but I cannot see objects on the other side. This object is translucent. The third object blocks all light. I cannot observe anything through this object. This object is opaque. Observing the liquid, we can observe that it is transparent. We can see clearly through the liquid. Here is an example of a liquid that is translucent. Light passes through it, but we can't clearly see through the liquid. Here is an example of an opaque liquid, crude oil. Light does not pass through this oil at all. Finally, we observe that air is transparent. Remember, the only gas that we are really going to study in fifth grade is air. Air is actually a mixture of gases. Air is mostly nitrogen. There is also oxygen and carbon dioxide in the air. This is important to remember when studying plants and animals. Air also contains water vapor. Water vapor in the air is always an invisible gas. Water vapor is made up of individual molecules or particles of water. It is easy to confuse things like clouds, fog, and steam as water vapor. These are not water vapor. Each of these are made up of condensed droplets of water floating in the air. That's a lot of information about color and light. You don't really need to remember transparent, translucent, and opaque. Just be familiar with those terms. When studying minerals, those are one way to identify one mineral from another. Recognize that the texture of an object is observed by touch. Recognize that temperature is the amount of heat in an object, is measured with a thermometer, and is recorded as degrees Celsius. We can observe solids, liquids, and gases using our sense of touch. First, we can observe the texture of an object. Objects might be described as smooth, rough, glassy, these words describe the texture of an object or material, how it feels against our skin. We can compare objects based on texture. Some objects might be more or less rough than other objects. Sandpaper, which is rough to the touch, is actually categorized by roughness. Number 60 sandpaper is rougher than number 100, and number 100 is rougher than number 400, and so on. This sample of number 2000 sandpaper actually feels smooth to the touch, but it still has grit. Another property of objects that we can observe with our sense of touch is temperature. We are used to describing objects and materials using words like warm and cool, warm, cool, hot, cold. These words are familiar words and they are certainly okay to use in science, but they are actually opinions. What feels warm to me might feel hot to you. In general, though, we can kind of agree on descriptions like warm to the touch or cool to the touch. To be more precise, we need to provide accurate measurement for temperatures. Thermometers can do that. 
There are two basic kinds of thermometers we can use, tube thermometers and digital thermometers. Let's look at tube thermometers first. These thermometers are filled with a liquid that will expand, get larger, with heat. Left sitting on my table for a long time, this thermometer has come to what we call room temperature, somewhere around 75 degrees Fahrenheit. To measure the temperature of this sample of liquid, I simply put the thermometer into the liquid and give it a minute or two to finish expanding. Once the liquid in the tube has stopped moving, I can read and record the temperature. In science, we record temperature in degrees Celsius. Tube thermometers are the easiest to use and measure the temperature of liquids and the air. Digital thermometers are useful to measure the surface temperature of solid objects. For example, we can use a digital thermometer to measure the temperature of the sidewalk in the sunlight and in the shade. Remember, it's okay to use terms like cool to the touch to describe temperature. Start practicing measuring the precise temperature of liquids instead of saying mix with warm water, say mix with water at 50 degrees Celsius. Also, remember to be careful about using Fahrenheit and Celsius scales.